Okay, last time I showed you guys how to find the vertex of a parabola where with the algebra that we complete the square, and we also talk about calculus where we took the derivative, right? This time, let's talk about how to find the vertex of a cubic curve, namely the vertex of the graph of y is equal to ax to a third power plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And before we talk about this right here, let me tell you, the algebra itself, in this case, it's not really enough. If you want to try to do this right here by just using algebra, I will leave that to you, right? I'm going to utilize the concept that I discussed with you guys in the previous video, the derivative. And now let's talk about three main category of how a cubic curve will look like, all right? So we have three categories like this. The first situation right here, this is the pretty situation. I call this the pretty curve. Why? Because you see the cubic curve goes up and it stops and it goes down and then it stops and it goes up again, all right? And notice, just like in the previous video, the point right here and here, if you place the marker at these two points, the marker will become horizontal, meaning we'll have horizontal tangent line, meaning the first derivative at these two x values will be zero. And this is the big hint on how we are going to make the connection between derivative and the vertex formula. And by the way, this right here, the technical term for it, it's called the local maximum, and the reason that we have the term local is because this is not the absolute maximum because the function right here keeps going up, right? Likewise, this is just a local minimum because you can see that the function right here keeps going down, right? But we are still interested to find out these two points right here, right? These are called the local maximum and local minimum. And you can also you know, just call them to be the vertex, vertices of the cubic curve. And likewise, you can turn the graph upside down so we have this version as well, same idea. Now the second category is that you may have a curve that goes up and then it stops right here, all right? So if you place your marker right here, it is still going to be horizontal. So you'll still have horizontal tangent line at this point. However, the curve keeps going up. So right here, the derivative well, the slope of the tangent line right here, it's also zero. However, this is not a local minimum nor a local maximum. This is what we call a saddle point. Imagine that you are just climbing a mountain. From here, you go up, and then right here, you just take a break. And then the deal is, you have to keep going up, right? So that's the deal. And likewise, you can have a curve that goes down, stops like this, become flat, and then keeps going down. Okay, so this right here, we have the derivative at some point being zero. And the third category right here is that the derivative is never equal to zero. Well, as you can see, the curve, well, it can also be like this. You go up, but it never stops, it never becomes flat, and you just keep going up. It's also possible. Imagine if you use the markers, no matter who you place the marker on the curve, the marker will never become horizontal. Unlike this one, unlike this one, this one right here. So this right here, we don't have anything at all in that, in that sense. But our goal is to come up with a formula first, and I'll show you guys you know, an example of how this is going to work. So that's the part two. Anyway, we are going to utilize the concept of first derivative. So let's go ahead and write this down, y prime for the first derivative. We are going to take the derivative, and we can use the power rule again. And right here, we can just go ahead and bring the 3 to the front, and the minus 1, that's going to be 3a x squared, and similarly, right here, we can just bring the 2 to the front, so we can say that's plus 2b x, and then minus 1, so it's x to the first power. Next, this is cx to the first power, bring the 1 to the front, and minus 1 right here, x to the zeroth power now is just 1, so we just have c, so that's plus c. Lastly, the derivative of d is going to be 0, because it's just a constant, this right here doesn't have any x, so it doesn't change, all right? So this is the expression for the first derivative of a cubic equation, all right? And this right here is going to tell you the slope of the tangent line at any x value that you want. But what we want is, we want to find out at what x value, right? At what x value, so that the slope of the tangent lines are going to be zero. So we have to set this to be zero. 
And see, this is the same strategy that what we did last time, all right? And notice, originally, we started with the cubic curve. Now, after we differentiate that, we minus 1 from the highest power, so we have a quadratic situation, isn't it? x to the second power. How can we solve for x1 here? Well, I cannot really factor this. And last time, I showed you guys the completing the square technique already. This time, let me just use quadratic formula. And if you want to see how to prove the quadratic formula from the completing the square, I have a video for you guys in the description, so you can watch that. But anyway, let me use the quadratic formula. I will do this for you guys. First of all, let me indicate that capital A is a coefficient of x squared, which is 3a, okay? Because they have little a right here already, <laughs> little a right here already, I want to use capital A for the quadratic formula. Anyway, capital B is the coefficient of x, which is 2b. Capital C is this little c. And now let's get to work. And let me remind you, whenever we have an equation, a quadratic equation in the standard form, right? We can get x to be negative b in capital letter because you know we have the little b's on the top already, all the stuff. Anyway, plus minus square root of capital B square minus 4 capital A capital C and then all over 2 capital A. And now we just have to draw everything accordingly into the formula and work it out. We have the minus capital B is this 2 little b, so let's put that down. And then we have plus minus square root of capital B is 2 little b right here. And then we square that, and then minus 4. Capital A is 3A. And then capital C is little c. So this is what we have. O over 2 times capital A, which is 3 little a. Like this. And of course, we'll continue by just simplifying this expression. Let's see what we can do. Right here, we will have negative 2b plus minus square root. This is 2 squared, which is 4. b squared is just b squared. And then 4 times 3 is 12. So we have minus 12 a times c like this, so ac like this, all over 2 times 3a, which is 6a, right? And now, can we do more? Yes, because I noticed we can factor out 4 from here and here, right? So let's do that. I will just write this down right above it to save some space. This is going to be the square root. Factor out the 4, we will have b squared minus, we factor out 4, so it becomes a 3, ac, all right? And now you know this is going to be negative 2b, right? Here, and then plus minus. Notice that we have a square root of 4 right here. Square root of 4 is 2. I should put this down in blue just to honor the blue pen. And then we have the square root of b squared minus 3ac all over 6a. And now what? Well, we can factor out 2 on the top and then cancel out with a factor of 2 on the bottom, right? Or you can do, you can just divide everything by 2. So cancel this, cancel that, and cancel that. You will have a 3 on the bottom. So we have x equal to negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 3ac. Hmm, it looks kind of familiar, right? And then all over 3a. Hmm. This right here, it's really similar to the good old quadratic formula, isn't it? Except for originally you had the minus 4 and then the 2 right here, but now it's minus 3 and the 3 right here, and the rest are the same. Anyway, this right here is going to give you the potential local maximum, local minimum, or the saddle point, all right? Well, how do we know what situation are we going to have? It depends on the discriminant, namely b squared minus 3ac. Because you know, if this part gives you a non-zero number, right, non-zero real number, then you have to do the plus minus, so you have two answers for it. When you have two answers, you are going to have this situation, right? Because you have one right here, one right here, well, maybe the other way around. So this is what I will do for you guys. Pay attention to just the b squared minus 3ac. And now, here is the deal. Right here, this is a situation when b squared minus 3ac is a positive 
number and I will just write this down for you guys b squared minus bac if this is greater than zero then we will have this situation all right one way or the other and you see this right here we only have the horizontal tension line one time that means this part has to be zero so we don't do you know plus minus plus minus zero is just you know zero anyway so this is situation is when we have b squared minus 3ac is exactly equal to zero right for these two situations and lastly this is the situation when this is going to be a negative number because we cannot take the square root of a negative number it doesn't make sense in the real world right we cannot grab that we cannot have anything we're not talking about complex analysis so lastly when we have b squared minus 3ac to be less than zero then we have this situations right here all right so once again if the discriminant namely the expression itself the square root is positive that means we'll have uh, the horizontal tension line twice so we have this situation that situation or maybe the other way and if we only have b squared minus 3ac to be zero that means we only have one answer from here that means we only have the horizontal tension line one time so it's either this picture or this picture lastly if this is the imaginary number namely the inside right here is a negative number and we'll end up with an imaginary number right in that case the slope of the tangent line is never equal to zero so the function is just like keep going up or keep going down so that's when this is less than zero okay so that pretty much summarizes the three situations so you see this right here you can do it first from the original cubic equation right the b squared minus 3ac and then just work it out then you will know what kind of shapes right you are about to get now we also have to talk about how to determine if once you figure out an x value right and we call that to be a critical number it's not going to give us a local minimum or local maximum right so in that case we have to talk about the second derivative and now let's write that down here this right here it's a first derivative already so I just have to go ahead and take the derivative again right here I will have to bring the 2 to the front again and then we will have 6ax and then a minus 1 right here so we will have x to the first power and then differentiate this bring the 1 to the front minus 1 we will just end up with plus 2b and the derivative of c is just going to be 0 this right here is it now we are going to pay attention to the x value right because once you work this out you may have two answers right and then what you want to do is plugging one of the x values right here first and then work it out to see if it's positive negative or zero all right so this is what we call the second derivative test y double prime if you plug in the x value into here along with the a and b value from the original if you end up with a second derivative to be greater than zero once again the second derivative tells you if the graph concaves up or concaves down this is positive meaning the function is concave up that means we'll have a local minimum just like this case right here because at this x value the function concaves up opens up like this so if the second derivative is positive at that x value you know you will get a local minimum right and then similarly we can have the other situations when the second derivative is less than zero that means you have a function concave down just like this then you will have a local maximum right okay what happens if the second derivative is exactly equal to zero well that's indeed this situation right here this is not a local minimum this is not a local maximum and this point right here it's called the saddle point right it's neither a local minimum it's not a local maximum but the derivative the first derivative right the first derivative is still equal to zero right here but anyway this is what you have to do 
remember this right here and then work it out and then at the end uh, depending on how many x values you get plugging into plugging each x value into this expression and then look at the sign and then you will know what kind of situation that you are about to get and be sure you guys watch my next video because I'll show you guys an actual example on how to use this vertex formula and the second derivative test right here to find the local minimum and the local maximum of a pretty cubic curve, right? And by pretty, I mean this situation because I want to have you know, some variations, not just these situations. Anyway, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And for all my viewers, thank you guys so much for watching. And at the moment, that's it.